Hello, today I want to show and share a little story out of my work life. And this is all under the name of communication and um, the, 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 the take on it that you can easily under communicate, but the probability of over communication is really, really low. And the second phrase on this one is Wer schreibt, der bleibt. This is German and means something like if you note it down, you will stay. Um, this is something out of the sales and business world, of insurance business, where I learned that and heard it first. But it also holds true for everything you have to do in your work life, but also on agreements you make with friends, family. Um, it's good to talk about it. It makes it easier to talk about things, to have a quick conversation on a topic, on an agreement, on a plan or whatever. But be sure that you get like a if, even if it's two line of text on WhatsApp, SMS, three iMessage, Signal, whatever you have. I mean, probably not Telegram, but it might work as well. And these are um, the reasons to do so. And I give you a live, a real life example. So what happened today? So one of, I'll just give you the whole story, un, <laughs> uncensored. So one of our workers was asking to use the company van. And uh, we usually arrange that, put, put the tech stuff, everything is fine. So, and we try to use also any transfers we have to make at the same time, so everyone has a benefit out of it. The company, the workers getting the, the, the van, all is fine. So, and we wanted to move one machine from one restaurant to another, because one is, will be basically used for spare parts, and the other machine is okay, but needs some spare parts, so we wanted to have that on one location. So now my work is driving to the restaurant and said like, hey guys, I'm here to pick up that one machine. The machine is gone. Gone, it's not there. And it took everyone uh, a little while to understand where's the machine. So what, ha what happened is that we wanted to have an understanding what is broken on the machine. We asked the company who was um, delivering the machine and uh, it seems that they came, they took it, they make, made a quote and they never brought the machine back. And I mean, I was working in a car business before and when we had cars in our garage and they get not repaired or picked up, we would call the owner of the car and tell him like, hey, your car is still here. I mean, that really happened. There were people who left their car in the car shop. Long time. I mean, friends had the problem that some of their friends left the car in their garage for a long time, which were broken. But a different story. But what was weird is that no one of the company for this uh, machine was giving us a call or saying like, hey guys, uh, by the way, we still have our machine here, uh, your machine here, what, do, do you not need that? Because you, you opened your restaurants again for the public, for people to sit in, dine in. Nope, did not happen. And uh, now we found out that there's an actual quote on this, that it was taken, evaluated. But there was no message inside whatsoever that it's not uh, it's not brought back. And um, there we go. Make sure that you have the right processes in place. And out of this one, yep, next learning. Get a, even if it's just an Excel chart, or get a bit a bigger piece of paper where you say like, this is a defect, this is a person contact, this is a status, and then make the follow-ups on it. Yes, it does sound so simple, but uh, the thing is here, it is simple, but not easy. Because on many of those small things, you just assume it's gonna be so easy, it will be just fixed in a few days. So why bother noting things down? And um, yep, we realize again, it is better to note things. And communicate, communicate, communicate. Give you another example, this time private life. We have two doors in our, in our apartment building. One major entrance door that goes to the mailbox system and a second door 
which is the inner door which goes to the elevator. During the day, the external door is open to the public. So everyone can go to the mailbox. We have 153 uh, people living in the house. And then the second door needs to be opened by a key or if someone rings the door. So far, so good. In the past, at the evening, at some time, the outer door is closing and you need a key there as well. That's all. Now they changed the system. The outer door closes in the evening and the inner door is supposed to be opening. But no one is getting informed about that. So whenever you made a claim to the, uh, to the um, facility manager, they were just coming by, the technicians came, they, they asked in the morning, they rang you out of bed at 8 o'clock a.m. Hey, which door exactly you mean, etc. And no one is telling us, oh, that's a feature, not a bug. We just changed the programming. A lot of waking up for nothing, a lot of technicians running around for nothing, and you could just save it by one mail. So now we talked about it, uh, the facility manager manager is telling us, yep, that's the plan it's supposed to be, which is great. But the intermediate company who is doing the, the external work, they're still not informing us. I mean, I know it firsthand by phone, but there's 152 other tenants who don't know that. And I'm asking myself, if I would be in the position right now, that would be one thing I would do. At least for this case, I would send an email to all tenants and say like, hey, we have a small change to the programming. That would make life a lot easier. Another thing, we have a mailbox system. So the post guys, DHL, UPS, whatever, they come and instead of dropping the, the mails, the, 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 the cartons, the boxes, whatever you got, to drop it in front of the, mail, the, the, the physical mailboxes, they can use a system they get a, sorry for the bike here, they get a pin code and um, then they can open the box, put the box inside and there's an internal email then to the tenant who will get that uh, pin code to open it again. So one box is opening, I get the pin code and only I have the pin code. Great system. Didn't work with one of my email addresses. We don't know why. If there's my iCloud address inside, it doesn't work. So we used a different email. I mean, with every newsletter, with all data protected stuff, you get an automatic email if there's something be changed, like your phone number is changed, your birth date is changed, your name is changed. But whenever someone is changing the email address in the system, there's no email or message to me. So guess what? Last week again, we got a message like, hey, you have mail with no pin code. And then we had to talk to the technical person. One person came over, sent me an extra one-time pin code to unlock the box and get my package. Now I have to hope that they changed my email address because I, guess what, got no message that the email was changed back to the email I wanted to have. And there we go again. These are just three examples instead of the two where it is so important to communicate a little more because, yeah, I have to hope now, because if there's an urgent package, I will not get it on the time when I need it, etc., etc. And all the other cases as well. People driving around the world with 32 degrees outside, no air condition. I mean, come on. And I would start with our mistake because, I mean, fair enough, we all fall into place. But just a quick reminder for you, if you make changes to plans where other people are involved, communicate. That makes your life a lot easier. Thank you so much. Have a great one. I go to co-op now and get some stuff to eat. See you next time. And uh, don't forget to subscribe and like the video. Bye bye.